where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free and the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic wall, where the words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dairy desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee, into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom. My father, let my country awake. Hi guys, good evening. Welcome to the panel discussion convened by Pinkish Foundation. I am Asma Junaid from Isabella Thoban College and I will be moderating today's panel discussion. Before I start this show, I would like to extend my apology to the viewers uh, because of some network issue, uh, my camera is facing some problems, so I am not visible. So my deep, uh, deepest apologies for that. Um, now, as you all know, that today's session is about nationalism. Nationalism is an ideology that helps in uniting its people. It, the purpose is to develop a sense of belonging among its people. It unites people across different religions, cultures, ethnicity, race, and color. It's an idea that nurtures the heat of a certain nation in initiating and attaining nation sovereignty. As we all know, that nations, uh, as we all know, nations are regularly being reimagined by younger generation, who often offer a vision counter to those constructed by older generation, and transmitted through mechanisms such as schooling. Let's put up this point for discussion. Now, I would like to introduce my amazing self panelists that ha I have today with me here, starting from Disha Sharma. She is from South Point School, Guwahati. Next in we have Tina. She is from St. Mary's Academy, Meerut. Then we have Joya Abdin. She is from Assam Valley School, Tejpur. Then we have Jitin Patel, who is from MDS Public School, Udaipur. And last but not the least, we have Khyati Vyas, who is from Sanskriti, the Gurukul, Gohati. Thank you guys for joining in today for the discussion and I'm really, really excited for all the amazing conversations that we're going to have here. And before we start this discussion, I would like to tell my viewers that please keep commenting your questions because we are going to pack a lot of insight in this session and I need your help to achieve it. So, so please be ready with your questions. Now, let us commence with the discussion. I would like to call my first speaker of the day, Disha Sharma. Disha, you may take the floor. Uh, sorry, Disha, you, can you please unmute? Yeah, sorry, sorry. That's my problem. I'll, I'll just start in again. Good evening, everyone. I'm Disha Sharma of Sultan School, Gohati, and I will be sharing my views on today's youth and nationalism. Well, what is nationalism? What I have learned till now is showing loyalty and love towards my country. And in a nation, this feeling of nationalism is present in all the citizens and not only today it has been present in human beings still time immemorial it's still time immemorial well going to today's discussion i would like to ask everyone what is an ideal nation some would say a nation with freedom of speech right to equality or a nation which provides liberty and sovereignty but ask me i would say a nation which has a healthy population and has its own value. Now, some of you may agree to it and some may not. Well, uh, with this, I could be keeping my second point on nationalism that even nationalism has no single definition. It can be defined by different people in different ways. Nationalism in the 20th century took an aggressive turn with the rise of Nazism, fascism, and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia in the 1990s. Many nations started saying no to aggressive nationalism well does it prove that time contemporary didn't have nationalism i would say no 
Remember, India struggled to freedom. The merge of nationalism, which was done, uh, the merge of nationalism, the socialism, capitalism, economic development by the United States and the former SSR. Let's start talking about the past, as it happened in the past the century. Of Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin are best examples of nationalism, which proves that even in the 21st century, nationalism is present. In abundance. So, and only the political leaders, does nationalism also present in today's youth or let's say the common people? I would say yes. Take, take it the speech of uh, uh, the famous quotes, be it Peter Sindhu, Siza, Mia Baichano, or Lavlina Bordohi. They all have shown nationalism in their own way. Although, then you know, all, all these are famous personalities. Then, even in the common people, nationalism is present. Now, we, the team of Indian students. Who, who were recognized and praised by NASA for the land rover they built, or the uh, people who were glory for the country. Nationalism is present in everyone. Now, uh, you might have heard people saying that the nationalism is depriving in today's youth, but it's on the words of the plan. Just because they are going to study in some foreign university, people think that a youth is not nationalist enough because they are leaving their country for better opportunities and for the individual group. I think even if an individual is growing, it, it also shows his nationalism towards his country because when the people grow, so a growth of the country see. Well, uh, you have seen a video surface online a few days back. The student, such as teacher speak on his graduation ceremony. People commented that you can take an Indian out of India, but you cannot bring Indian out of India. But, but you cannot bring but you cannot bring India out of an Indian. With that, I would like to end it. I would like to end my speech here. Thank you. Thank you, Disha. That was very, very well said. Next one, we have Tina. Tina, you may take the floor. Thank you, Asma. Good evening, everyone. This is me, Tina, from School St. Mary's Academy, presenting to you my speech on today's youth and nationalism. Nationalism is a term that has been used frequently by media outlets, politicians, journalists, and obviously the common man. It is disappointing to say that the term nationalism and its meaning has been taken out of context and misunderstood by some sections of the society, what has led to showing nationalists in the negative limelight. Well, today we are going to talk about what nationalism really is and its relation to today's youth. A country is run by its people. For example, nationalism encourages environment protection. People with high national pride would obviously not keep their surroundings dirty. So, therefore, the people with high national pride would keep their surroundings clean and work hard so they can actually keep their surroundings clean. In contrast, an individual with low nationalism pride and maybe he would throw garbage carelessly there should be a sense of belonging inculcated amongst people for their country and nationalism does exactly that. There is no particular definition of nationalism, but the popular discourse is that nationalism is an ideology or a set of beliefs that people of the country follow to promote the interest of the nation above anything else. The spirit of nationalism is hard to define. Its inspiration lies in a variety of sources. A big question is, how did nationalism arise in different countries? Well, nationalism arose in different countries in different ways. For example, in Europe, it made its appearance through the formation of nation, where in, whereas in India, it is a product of struggle of the colonial rule. Now, moving on to the youth. Many believe that nationalism, many believe that nationalism among the younger generations is on the decline. Well, the younger generation and the youth are actually, you know, are fascinated by songs, a lifestyle, and uh, movies, and all the other stuff from the Western culture. So. Um, this shows their love for the Western culture, but I guess it's not true that it's on a decline because I would like to say that until you stick to the roots of your nation, it's actually not on a decline. So a couple of factors may have contributed 
to the shift of you know the way young express themselves so in the end i would like to say for the youth of today national identity is needed to maintain the roots in this globalized world but they still need to express love for their nation thank you so much Thank you, Tina. There were some great points said by Tina. Next up, we have Zoya Abdul. Zoya, you may take the floor. Thank you, Azma. Good evening, everyone. Present out here. My name is Zoya Abdul. I'm from Gangtok, Sikkim. Currently studying in the Assam Valley School. The topic that I'm going to talk about today requires most of the attention in today's world, because like how the word nationalism took a lot of time to come in real sense, the problem in today's world is that we try to create patriotism with nationalism. When we ask any person about their perspective towards the definition of nationalism, the first answer that they have is, "Is the love towards one nation?" Yeah, sure, it is love for one's nation, but do we really show love, or mostly try to prove our love to aggression and violence? Nationalism has become a major reason for wars, and history is witness to the fact that excessive love for nation leads to fascism. Rather, nationalism is looking out for better ways to make one's nation a better place to be in by striving to look out for best possible ways and not just confining yourself to a limited way. It is the advocacy or support for the political independence of a particular nation or people. I'll give you an example in this. Let's take education as the main focus. When a person is trying to ed educate him or herself for any given exams, they don't confine themselves to limited source, do they? Do we? No. They go beyond their abilities to bring out the best outcomes. Same goes for nationalism. We need to try better ways and more ways to bring in required changes for the betterment of this nation, to tackle the society mentality and create a place, pleasant, peaceful, surviving atmosphere around. Talking about the betterment of the nation. Today's youth plays a very important role in contributing to the betterment of the nation. Today's youth is highly trusted to be knowing more about the peculiarities of today's generation, the pros and cons, and the steps for its evolving to become a better place for people. Today's youth can also be called as the main key to the rapid progress of developing a nation. Also, I would like to add on about economic nationalism, which should be understood as a set of practices to create. bolster and protect national economies in the context of world markets there should be an awareness that going instability may entail greater economic nationalism the key lesson from the period after the second world war is relevant thank you thank you zoya that was very very well said next up we have jitin jitin you may share your views nationalism liberalization and globalization when we hear this complex term bl no not another history lecture please so today is different keeping the textbooks aside we are going to hear it from what we as you feel about nationalism hi i am jitin patel from mds public school udaipur so as you all are here today to know what the youth of india feels about nationalism i as a school going teenager will share my views on the topic okay so keeping all the theoretical definitions aside when i hear the word nationalism i get a sudden insight of the freedom struggle we had during the colonial rule i get goosebumps by remembering the powerful slogans that we used so to uh, so to put it straight i describe nationalism as the identity of a nation plus the patriotic feelings of the society okay when we look at look back to our past we saw shri jawaharlal nehru writing the book discovery of india which i believe is a must read for every indian And the Sorry um, to interfere you in between, Jitin. Could you just speak, speak loudly? Yeah. And the dialogue between Ravindranath Tagore and Mahatma Gandhi in the wake of violence that erupted during the course of the non-cooperation movement. So these are the two notable attempts in the direction, and that makes me believe that it was anti-colonialism that brought together the people of India on one common platform. so that takes me to my point to believe that anti colonialism united the people of india despite of the great diversity and differences in religious and social beliefs that exist okay enough of talking about the past let's get back to the present in the present world where the youth is believed to be the strongest pillar of development for every nation our youth has a different perspective about nationalism where nationalism has taken bits and pieces from globalization our youth believes that Uh, our youth believes that the world is one nation i support that by noting 
I support that by noting the rise in the Western culture influence on today's youth. I feel that it's a very positive aspect when we are inclined towards when we are inclined towards learning from the world and being attached to our own roots where none of them is sacrificed at any stage. Okay, I truly agree to the fact. I truly agree to the fact that nationalism is an ideology and different people can have different ideas about it. But at the end, it's a sentiment that binds us together as a nation. A nation that is politically mature and equal strong. So that takes me to my closing statement where I would like to mention that we as youth are the strongest pillar of development for every nation and we are the most powerful resource any nation can have. So let's change the statement. It's not you or me when it comes to serving the nation, it's us. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Last but not least, we have Khyabi. Khyabi, you may take the floor. Thank you, Asma. So, nationalism consists not in waving the flag, but in striving that our country shall be righteous as well as strong. Good evening, everyone. I am Khyati Vyas of Sanskriti, the Gurukul, Kuhati, and I am here to share my opinions on nationalism. The feeling of love and pride towards the nation one is born is purely natural and is ingrained in almost every human throughout the world. There is no exact definition of nationalism, but it is popular among the masses that nationalism is an ideology or set of beliefs that the people of the country follow to promote the interests of the nation above anything else. The youths, often referred to as the young blood, are considered to be the light of the nation. The youths are impulsive and are sensitive, but once they fix their targets, there is no coming back. The youths are often referred to as the building blocks of the nation. The statistics of 2019 shows that the developing countries which have a huge youth population could be seeing tremendous growth in all the sectors of the countries, provided they invest in young people's education, health, and also protect and guarantee their rights. The youths have also contributed in many sectors like science, technology, medicine, sports, etc. for the development and progress of India, which raises the spirit of nationalism even today. Thanks to the talent and infrastructure in our country today, India is among the topmost countries in the world in the field of scientific research. For instance, Rifat Sharuk, an 18-year-old from Karur in Tamil Nadu, scripted history by designing the world's smallest satellite. The tiny 3D printed satellite is called Kalam Sat after former president APJ Abdul Kalam and was flown by NASA into space in one of its missions. Another example is of the development of an atomic clock which was made by ISRO, one of the few space organizations in the world to have gained this sophisticated technology. In the field of medicine also, India is among the topmost countries for the amazing discoveries which the young scientists have made. For instance, Indian scientists have developed a gel that can protect farmers from toxic pesticides. Indian scientists have also made discoveries to tackle with diseases such as dengue, chikungunya, tuberculosis, etc. Not only science, technology, medicine, India has also made its place in the field of sports. Recently, at the Tokyo Olympics, the male Indian hockey team has backed the bronze medal. Wrestler Ravi Dehya won a silver medal. A Sam boxer Lavlina Burgohain backed a bronze medal and the very famous badminton player P.V. Sandhu also won a bronze medal, which is also a form of nationalism and bringing glory to India, according to me. In the past history, as we can see in those days, nationalism was prevalent then too. Indian socialists like Bhagat Singh, Chandrasekhar Rizad, Sukhdev Thapar, etc. have also made enormous sacrifices for India's freedom circle. Hence, I strongly believe that nationalism is the key to the upliftment and progress of the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Khyati. That was very insightful first half of the discussion. Summing it up, it can be said that nationalism refers to the body of thoughts or beliefs held about the nation by its people and especially the youth and how the collective actions and attitudes acknowledge the utmost importance of the nation subsequently achieving or sustaining its moral, cultural, or political outcome of a country. I kind of agree with what you all said about the youth playing an important role in the progress and development of a country. It has the power to help a country develop and move towards progress. 
it's also responsible for bringing social reform they are considered the voice of the nation thank you asma i totally agree with you but i want to put some light on it by saying that a nation plays a very significant role in empowering the youth i think the best investment a nation can make is not weapons or petroleum or gold the best investment a nation can make is education health and your development okay so for instance let let's look at the japan model uh, from being a poor country to becoming the technology leader of the world what they have done significantly in the last many decades is that they have invested in their youth potential and social development so that's the model we go forward with we are no far from the maximum utilization of our uh, young talented minds thank you Thank you, Jitin. I would like to have a say on this. So, yes, I completely agree with what Jitin just said. Nationalism can empower today's youth, and us knowing more about today's technology, we are highly trusted to have broader access ideas. Let's just take an example of our own parents. When they lack ideas regarding technology, they come to us, and we can solve the problems without having a doubt of in ourselves. We can go beyond our capabilities and find more better ways. in the same way when it comes to nationalism we can adopt more better ways because we are more exposed to so many other things than our elders are thank you um disha would you just like to add upon to what uh, zoya said yes i strongly agree to both of them that you are the building block i think a uh, nation with a developing population that be the field of economics or technology or science or research and india uh, it is an opportunity advantage for india as new population the popul the population of india is not on a decline moreover i sh uh, i can say that as a youth we have a great uh, technology as we all are gen z we live in the world of we live in the world of digital technology we can voice our thoughts or if we think or the ways we want our nation to improve we can show our nationalism on all platforms and that would not be limited by boundaries we are all over the world and the and what we can do thank you um thank you disha um i think kyabi would like to say something upon it Asma, could you please repeat your question? Um, we all were talking about how the youth play an important role in the development of the country, and how the youth understand the meaning and concept of nationalism today. So, I just wanted to ask that: Would you like to say something about it? Yes, I completely agree that the youth plays a very important role in the development of our country. and uh, as zoya already said that exposure to so many things makes the youth more intelligent and i think the youth is as i said earlier the youth is often referred to as a young blood so they are more prone and they are every time ready to help the nation make our country proud i would like to add on to what my fellow panelists said as we know youth are fresh minds fresh people so they can make a lot of use of their brain plus if they use it for their nation this would show how nationalistic they are and if they go out and then make use of the outer sources and still stick to their roots and bring honor to the country uh, it's really good for them thank you so much um that is all the point of views were really great and i also agree with what you all said that we can show love for the nation nationalism is all about you know loving your nations and working hard towards the progress of the nations i think uh, love can be expressed in a lot of ways like abiding the rules and regulations of the country paying taxes and in these covid times you know about um, abiding by the restrictions and staying at home and not going out without mask it's also i think a kind of nationalism because we are trying to protect the people of the country the na 
nationalism is all about, you know, um, well, you know, uh, making this place, making a country a better place, and uh, you know, loving our people. So I think uh, to express nationalism, the love for one's country, we can show it in many ways. We don't have to always do something very great, but individually on our levels, we can uh, abide by the rules, we can abide by the COVID restrictions, we can make this place a safer for everyone and greener and a good place for our future generation to live in. Okay, so now with this, it's time that we move on further into the discussion. Okay, so before I move on further, I would like to tell my viewers that I will be taking your questions in between too. So please um, keep commenting your questions. It would be highly appreciated. So now my first question is that what does the word nationalism, being Indian, truly mean to a youth? Okay, I would like to... Well, I would like to speak about... Yeah, Disha, continue. Jitin, you can go through. Okay. Well, I would like to uh, like tell my views uh, on nationalism. As a youth, I think nationalism for me is not only... ...talking on the internet that I, because I believe that action speaks louder than words. I'm a firm believer of this phrase. And I think for me, nationalism would be representing my country, glory for my country, or making my country proud on an international level. Like for me, even if I get uh, even if I get my admissions in MIT, that would be my way of showing nationalism. If I go to NASA and I do a research, which proves like that could be the first in the world, that would be my way of showing nationalism. Just have to remember, Kalpana Chakra and Rakesh Sharma. There were the fourth Indian men and women to grow into the space but usually people say that they find their jobs in Israel I would say they went to NASA being being in a foreign country as an Indian they went to Spain like they were given the opportunity so that was their way of showing nationalism so I think as today's youth nationalism would me for me would not only be staying in my country or limiting my opportunities it would be going outside and proving even to people out there that we Indians are not less than anyone. We have good resources. We have good brains. We have good identity. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Um, Zoya, would you just like to I add upon to it? Okay, Jeevan, go ahead. Uh, I totally agree to that. Uh, and I would like to uh, support it by uh, giving in a recent example. So, our uh, hockey team has won a medal at the Olympics after 41 years. So, that's a very significant win for us and I think it's a very, it, it was a dream for every Indian. Uh, it was not just Manpreet Singh and CJ Ravindran or the hockey team dream, it was a dream for the, uh, for, um, for the nation. And when they made us proud uh, in the Olympics, we all were happy, we all were cheerful. So I think that's also a way of expressing your nationalism. That was such a classy answer. Would anybody else just like to add on to what Jeet and Andisha said? Yes, I would like to add on by saying nationalism to me really means the identification of one's interest. Like, you know, how nations, they have so many, as our country is so diverse, we have so many cultures, we have so many activities. So having an identification of those interests, you know, and not just loving your nation, but also looking forward to making this nation a better place is nationalism to me. Thank you. I would like to add on to okay. what my okay, go ahead. Go ahead. As we know, thank you, Asma. As we know that nationalism is actually important for today's youth because you know they have so many skills, innovations, as Kathy or Disha said that the 18 year old boy made the smallest, like uh, invented uh, the smallest satellite and he did this for his nation. So what led to that, uh, you know, innovation? It's obviously the nationalism for his country. So thank you. Uh, I would like to end my answer. Yeah. Uh, yes, I completely agree to whatever Tina, Zoya, Jeetan and Disha said. Yes, in simple words, if I try to describe nationalism, it will be bringing glory to our nation love for our nation, individual growth as well, because if we don't grow ourselves, then how can our country grow? 
so first individual growth is very important and in this way we can make our india or the country a better place to live in thank you okay so now before i ask my next question i hope the viewers are commenting their questions because i'm going to take it very soon okay so now moving on to my next question that is the youth of today are extremely exposed to the world outside and at the same time they seem to have a very increasingly narrow definition of what they understand being indian as so you being the youth do you think that nationalism among the younger generation is on the decline uh i would like to throw some light on it yeah so nationalism is not on a decline but i feel it's it's redefined in its own way nationalism as i already mentioned the youths have developed so much in all the fields medicine uh, health and science and technology everything in all the sectors the youth is is excelling in so much that i think they are redefining the way and the definition of nationalism in their own way i would it's like to add on to happy's point like okay zoya you may continue okay so like kathy said it's uh, not in the verge of its declining but it's redefined yes i would like to completely agree with that because now we have a very different meaning and definition of nationalism because people tend to choose more aggressive and violent way to show their nationalism which is not how it works and also people get offended when we try to take exposure like from other parts of the country or we try to take we try to deal with our things with other ways so nationalism is not just about respecting culture it's about confining yourself not just to a limited source it's more about thriving and haunting more better ways going out of your capabilities to make one's nation into a better place so getting outside exposure is a must because india we all know is still a developing country but the other countries they have already developed and in such fascinating ways that we get inspired thank you i would like to add on to what zoya and kathy said uh, like uh, i also said that in my speech uh, that loving others ways and like indian ways as well is what nationalism is you're getting motivated by other countries like zoya said so we can actually take motivation and help from the developed country so that we make our country develop and that is what nationalism is for me and it's not on a decline to be honest it's just that the youth has their different ways nowadays and you know old people had their different ways thank you yeah i feel that um thank you tina yes you can go ahead yeah yeah thank you asma uh, i feel that taking the positive aspects from the western culture is a good way of rapid development but cutting off from your own roots is not the right way to go so i think that we have we have a diverse culture and we have a lot of learnings from our culture and if we mix it with a bit of learnings we get from outside the world uh, uh, i think that's a very good way of development and if we go that way our youth will be no far from dominating the world in every field if we take uh, if we take the current example we have a new education policy that will be implemented really really soon and in the new education policy it's more about the learning that we get from education and less about the memorizing part this is a very good thing we have taken from the western education system and i think this is the way it should be so this will help our youth a lot in their development in each and every field okay so that's my point on uh, taking the aspects from the western culture and keeping our own roots together thank you even i would like to add upon um, what my fellow panelists said yes they shall go ahead please even i even i, I would like to add upon what my fellow panelists said the people think that nationalism is declining in today's youth i think that because we are very more of western folks listening to music not only western music music from other foreign countries but i think only only listening to music that is made in india if that proves my if that if that proves my love for my country then i 
them for me. Because after all, all this, uh, like listening to music or watching movies, it's just a source of entertainment. And uh, why do I need entertainment? I think. Um, okay, so I would like um, Kathy to come uh, And in the Indian, in all sectors, even in men, even men and women, in all sectors are developing. Like, you see women who are pilots. Uh, shall I continue? Um, yes, go ahead, please. Sorry, and well, two ways in this just change. The youth is not being deprived. Um, I think they're having some network issues. Sorry for the disturbance. Um, Tina, we just like to add one to it. Um, okay, it seems like we having a network issue. Okay, so moving on to our next question, which I have that we, India, everyone knows uh, that India has a rich culture and diverse culture. So do you think the youth of today feel the importance to promote this culture towards the world outside, like the Western world? We listen to their music, we adapt them. But do you think there is a need to adapt the Indian culture, the Indian music towards the world outside? And the youth does feel this. Yes, I would like to talk on this. We would definitely it will be a pleasure for us to promote the Indian culture to the Western culture because we've been taking their culture as an inspiration. But at the same time, I would like to say, not everything needs to be said. We, we shouldn't be promoting our culture, but therefore making it so presentable that they themselves are attracted and drawn towards us. So we take inspiration from role models, right? They don't come to us and they don't tell us to take inspiration from them. We just look at them and they're so presentable that we are automatically drawn towards them and we want to be like them. So it's the same way with India. If we be presentable and if we present things the way it's supposed to be present, then I'm sure they're going to be drawn towards us, like how we are drawn towards them. Thank you. Asna, could you please do me a favor and repeat the question? I accidentally left the discussion. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely do. Um, Tina, I was asking that India has such a rich and diverse culture. Do you think that the youth of today feel the importance to promote it to the world outside? Asma, I cannot hear you. No, actually, it's so diverse that we can actually promote it. But I would, you know, agree with Zoya that things that are presentable should not be actually promoted or we can actually promote it because you know everybody uh, says that we want to go to Paris watch the Eiffel Tower we have so many temples you know they are so diverse they are so great so we are actually not shown those by the you know the schools we are only shown we are only read theory so I would like to the schools to actually uh, you know plan trips for us to those monuments and that things so that we know that how diverse we are and so that we can promote it to others as well. So once we know it and then we're going to promote it to others, that would be very helpful. Thank you. That was such a classy answer, Tina. Okay, so Disha, I think you want to say something more about it. Asma, I cannot hear you. Um, Zoya, would you like to say something else about it? That's that's all I have for now. Well, I would just like to add on to whatever Kathy and Tina just, you know, mentioned that, yes, you know, going on tours uh, and like, you know, having an ex exposure to so many monuments and stuff because India is just so not less. We have so much more to just how much we're confined to. So going on trips and taking all these youth, all the 
students to all these places will be of great deal of help. Uh, I would like to um, add okay, upon... so one of his well, uh, one... Okay, when I would like to say something mm -hmm. about this, like uh... yes, yes, go ahead, Disha, please. Okay, well, even I would like to say about this that um, I think uh, instead of just telling how rich our culture was, we should try to present it in a way that it is interesting. Because let's, uh, like the Western culture, we would never hear someone from America telling that, please follow our culture or look how fascinating our culture is. So I think even as today's youth, it should be our responsibility to present our culture in such a way that it looks good. Uh, and we can show uh, how good our culture is, how rich, how diverse our culture is. Uh, so I think instead of just like, uh, instead of just having theory knowledge, it should be more of practical and even more like, um, we should like try making our culture more interesting. Obviously, we can't change our culture, but we should present in present it in such a way that it looks interesting. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have an interesting question from the viewer. Um, Sonam wants to ask, what is the fine line between nationalism and pseudo nationalism, and how can pseudo nationalism be dangerous for the nation? I think Tina wants to say something about it. Um, well, uh, I, well I, I think that nationalism is love and I guess pseudo nationalism is a little bit of aggression. Uh, that's all I want to say right now. I want to say to the Okay, so anybody, anybody else would just like to add upon to what Tina said? Uh, like Tina said, it's more of aggression and violence. Yes, a national, it's a nationalism, basically nationalism, support nationalism, but in a more violent and aggressive way, and they have their own opinions. Like, they don't want to support this, they don't want to support that. They have their own way of, you know, doing stuff. So I think that is a harm because pseudo nationalism is not the real definition of nationalism. Okay, that is very, very well said. And now with this, we come to the end of this amazing session. Indeed, it can be said that nationalism is love towards the country one is born in and it's purely natural. The youth of today understand the concept of nationalism as oneness, feeling the goodness of the nation and its people, that is, unity and diversity. And they understand the role in the progress and development of their country. As it can be said, my country, right or wrong, if right, and if wrong, to be set right. For the youth of today, national identity is needed to maintain their roots in the globalized world. The young sense a strong need to follow global trends and to feel modern and contemporary, but at the same time, they still need to show the love for their nation. They also feel the importance of promoting the diverse and resource-rich India to the world. The youth of today feel that uh, nationalism is definitely about love towards the country, but it can be much more like bringing glory to the country, working for the progress, making our nation a better place, a safer place, a greener place for everyone, for providing better education and to live with everyone with peace and harmony without using any violence. With this, I wrap up today's session. I would like to thank Arun Gupta, sir, president of Pinkish Foundation, Shalini Gupta Ma, National General Secretary of Pinkish Foundation, Anindita Ma, Ruchi Ma, and Bunani Ma. And I would like to thank all my amazing panelists. Your questions, your answers, and your views were really, really amazing and wonderful. And it was my pleasure to be here with all of you as a moderator. And thank you for the viewers for joining us today. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs>